again. Welcome to the M File Change Your Music, Change Your Life podcast. Um, hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, I've kind of been, I don't know, procrastinating, I guess, a bit. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta make yourself just, you know, hit the record button. I mean, for me, that's legitimately <laughs> what's happening but you know getting over that metaphorical just hit the record button just go um yeah sometimes you're tired sometimes you're like oh do i want to do this am i in the right mood whatever i keep trying to talk as much to you as to myself and remember the very important lesson of motivation is bullshit you know, make creativity a habit. Make it go. <laughs> once once you get that boulder rolling down the hill, it, it you know, it just gets easier to do it. Habits are a really big part of our everyday life and our psychology and our wiring and everything like that. So I feel like, you know, when you learn something new in your songwriting, um or before it even gets to songwriting you learn something new and, and you want to try it out but you're not really sure how how it works um so that's kind of what i wanted to talk about today um the title is very creatively uh the guitar chord encyclopedia project um i've mentioned this a few times before but it is a, a big giant resource that i'm trying to compile and um it's been fun it's also like it, it's fun for the same reasons that it's also very monotonous because it's just tons of tweaking and making graphics and checking lists and referencing and everything and but um i kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that made me kind of have that moment of realizing that this is something that i should put time into creating as a resource you know uh talking about like my motivations for for starting uh m file as a whole are about you know let's talk about elevating your playing and and and, and changing your music and creating music that you hear in your head so i had to spend a lot of time thinking about resources you know like not just Oh, I'm going to make this and throw it out there. I need to reverse engineer from problems that I had or obstacles that got in my way of creating and trying to find ways to like, okay, if I make this and tweak this, maybe there's people out there that will be able to use this and find value in this because I know I would have. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that i'm working on that <laughs> i'm coming i'm coming from a place of i wish i would have had this or i wish that somebody would have tried to explain this to me in this way um yeah because obstacles to creativity shouldn't be so much of a thing um you gotta just let that music flow, man. <laughs> uh, so anyways, going all the way back, you know, lots of fun backstory stuff and everything. But um, when I started playing, like I was 14, 15 years old, and for the most part, it was just a lot of learning uh, power chords. That, that's always like kind of a good place to start on the guitar just chunking out power chords and it's really simple it's two or three notes and you just move that shape around the guitar and you start learning a little bit more with open chords and stuff like that and um but yeah so you know getting a little better and and starting to get out and and wanting to play more um i started realizing like you know being in a small town, you're not really exposed to a lot of opportunities to play music. You know, Sarnia is not a very big place. Um, it's bigger than some, 
you know, but in terms of being big enough to find lots of people who are also interested in playing music and the same types of music and and doing creative stuff with it um uh not always so much uh i think i think maybe that's changed over the years it has gotten a lot more artsy and accepting but you know years and years ago i just kind of felt like i was learning in my basement and i was playing with a few of my buddies and then our our first like my first band broke up and um but i was tr i was starting to write a lot more and just kind of playing you know for myself and the more i was learning i finally got to that point over that hump of when you're just kind of chunking things together <laughs> and then you kind of wake up one day and a light bulb goes off and you realize uh oh i'm a bit more conscious of my playing and this stuff i was playing doesn't really sound that great you know like i i it's funny i was watching a video today where um someone was talking about those those levels of being a student and there's like that un unconscious incompetence level where you first start and you're just making noise and you're having fun and then you get to that next level when you've learned enough to realize that you suck basically you're conscious of your incompetence so getting to that point you know a lot of students kind of get a little dissuaded at that point um so when i started hitting that point i wanted to be more confident in the music that i was playing and the music that I was writing. Uh, I wanted to be able to write stuff that wasn't just fun for me to play, but would be fun for people to play over. I figured, you know, if there's not that many people to play with, um, I'd be able to attract more people and the right kind of people uh, if I was writing better music. Sorry, I need my fuels. Um, yeah, I just, I wanted to be able to make the best possible choices in any musical situation, which is like a pretty general and lofty goal. But it's one that is an important distinction to make, especially when you're starting out, because there, you know, you don't always realize all of the choices that you have. And the more you start to think about it, it's, that's like the wisdom that comes with with the knowledge of music um but yeah it's kind of disheartening when you get to that level because um it's it's like i i know that there's something i could be doing better but i'm not really sure how to get there or like even what it might be <laughs> you know it's like hearing it's it's like when you turn the car on and there's like that sound and you're like oh something doesn't sound right something's not jiving with everything else but i don't know what it is so you start kind of getting to that point where like you know maybe i wouldn't be able to get any better you know like you just start thinking like okay something's wrong i don't even know what it is so how do i identify it if i can't identify it then am i going Am I going to improve? Can I? You know, maybe I wouldn't be able to make something really unique or new. Um, like when I'm, I'm listening to music that I love and just being so blown away by it, and then I go to pick up my instrument, and the first thing that comes out every single time is like a GCD chord combination g chord c chord d chord and like that's what i'm starting with you know and so like trying to get over that kind of despair um of of a lack of choices right so eventually you know like playing more getting a bit more adept and exposing um 
myself to the opportunity to play with people you know like seeing better musicians around and identifying these people and being like these people are great like i want to get in with them and i want to play with them because maybe i can learn something from how they play or they could give me some advice or some pointers or something and when i started playing with people who were more experienced with me or than me I started to realize like how limited my chops really were it was it was even more of that kind of like here's the mirror and like you're not looking so hot maybe take a nap wash your face you know like it was it was just kind of that like oh i'm 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 playing with them and i'm seeing what they're doing and i'm starting to see like there's a limit in in my realm of experience you know like i my chops are pretty limited i couldn't convey a ton of emotion with what i was easily able to choose from um my chords you know they didn't have a lot of co color or flavor um so yeah when when you start realizing that your menu is pretty bland you know you gotta kind of think about like okay well how do i how do i spice up my dog how do, how do i get a little extra in that soup um so the big thing was seeing well i don't know one 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 first big light bulb moment was um i i was really getting into the who for a while uh you know listening to more of their their stuff and and reading about them and i saw a thing that said uh pete townsend said he considered himself a rhythm guitar player and like i, I you know obviously he's the only guitar player so my first reaction to that was like but he's the only guitar player he's got to be the lead guitar player because who else is the lead guitar player and it didn't really occur to me somehow before that that like he didn't say he's not like the lead guitar player he doesn't play leads as you know them he's not sitting there playing solos and and melodies and stuff despite the fact that he absolutely can um it but he leads with his rhythm you know so the more i was kind of paying attention like his signature stuff is is playing you know suspended chords and having those chords and moving like one or two notes around within that chord so he's he's playing lead it's it's just that he's got the chord and he's got several different choices for the notes that's being played along with that chord that was one of those moments for me when it when it kind of clicked into place and was like okay it's not just about wailing guitar solos that's not the the mark uh, <clears throat> of the best guitar player or even a competent guitar player because you can very easily learn a scale pattern and turn up the distortion to 11 and hook your wah pedal up and just shred you know and just make a bunch of noise wow that's fast <clears throat> but it's a pattern you know so you're not really conveying too much of anything and in terms of a practical songwriting application doesn't really work outside of it's a little trick for this and it can get something across maybe but is that like what you're going to base your entire musical career around are you going to write all your songs like this i mean maybe there's probably a market for it there's a market for everything but you know i i started to kind of twist things around and see that I was only focusing on such a small thing on the guitar and starting to realize like the body of 
knowledge that like was literally just in my peripheral and I wasn't even like looking at it and then but I was still like why can't I why can't I do this why am I not and it's like right beside me answers you know learn about your instrument stack these notes make better chords make make movement you know so um just i don't want my coffee to get cold so i need to start chugging it <laughs> um yeah so <clears throat> the power of the guitar player who knows their chords and their place in the band as the rhythm guitar player that's like a huge huge thing because it's what's being played underneath the melody and the solo and everything they work very much in tandem because you're not going to get like the right prompts for what to solo over if it's you know if it's just a one note chord which isn't even really a chord you get a lot of choice as a guitar player but you need to know about all those choices otherwise it's just nothing right so i decided okay let's start learning about as many types of chords as i can and ways to play them and what to add and and when to do it um it was kind of blind searching for a while but i started trying to work out just different shapes and just see like how can i rearrange notes on the fretboard and try and just grip random things and see what happens um, I started writing and experimenting with chords and just trying to move things against each other and, and see what I could get out of it and trying to uh, do a bit more of that movement like the Pete Townsend thing where you're, you're playing leads and melodies with your chords which uh, is a lot a lot more challenging let's say than you might think um, so obviously in trying to learn about different types of chords and stuff like taking it at face value th there were just so many you know that's something that I think about very differently now but coming at it as like I'm just gonna learn about every type of chord um yeah it's it's system overload at that point because it's like there's so many different changes you can make to a chord and technically don't worry i'm scratching my belly it's gonna be it. technically they're all different chords so it's like let's buy some books let's try and figure this out let's maybe somebody else knows uh what i should be using and you know i got a couple books i still have them somewhere like big hardcover books like ultimate complete guitar and like supreme guitar and like just like boisterous um hyperbolic titles and stuff like just really in your face like this is the best possible thing and then looking through you know like it seemed at face value again very comprehensive it's big thick hardcover book and it's got a picture of a guitar on it but then you get to this the the stuff and after the excitement of like there's so many pages of chords and chord boxes like this is amazing and you start realizing like it's just kind of disorganized it's hard to use um like looking back on it uh i can see that it's like just outright incomplete <laughs> like or like mislabeled you know like just things spelled out in weird ways or like um one other book i was like wow there's so much stuff here but then they just take the same maybe seven different like shapes or whatever and then put them all in every key 
So you're literally just taking the same thing and then just changing the numbers on the, like the frets of the chord box. Well, thanks, idiot. Like I could have figured that out myself. You know, th this isn't actually helpful for anybody. Even if somebody was trying to learn like I was, like being like, oh, I can move this up a half step and it's the same chord. Well, yeah, of course. Like it was one of those things where it didn't, like even when I needed to use it, I was looking at it and being like, this isn't helpful. Like I don't really get it, you know? Um, so it was just kind of clueless ab ab about how to use these chords. Like I'm looking and, and there's lots of pretty pictures, you know, there was no lack of content. But it was like, here's a crazy chord, a G flat minor seven flat five 13 flat nine chord. What, what does that mean? You know, like, Granted, like, that's probably a really interesting... I want to go play it and see what it sounds like. But, like, I know what that means. At that point, when it's just like, oh, here's every chord you're ever going to need. Like, okay, fine, but, like, what do I... How do I get there? Like, what, what does it mean? Why do I use it? The, what, what, why is there a 13? Like, where's a 13 come from? You know, like, I didn't know about extensions yet. I didn't get that idea. It didn't make any sense to me. So looking at it, and it was just, yeah, it was kind of just like a waste of time. Because it's now I just have a bunch of pictures. I'm basically still in the same position that I was before I started looking at it. Except maybe I'm a little worse off, because now I'm looking and I'm like, this makes even less sense. <laughs> like I don't I don't know so yeah just like looking at all these different options and then okay like let's try and choose some see what they do and with no idea of the context of the chords you're, you're just throwing throwing fridge magnets you know like seeing what sticks and most of the time nothing will now, granted, like, I'm not saying there's anything against experimenting. I experiment, I, it's, experimenting is very important. But again, when you're setting up obstacles to the creative process, that sucks. It's, it's like when, you know, like how many times have you been like, oh, I've got this, I, I just want to make something, I want to put something down. And then you go and grab your guitar and you realize like, Oh, I got a, I got a tune. Okay, let's get the tuner and let's tune this up. And oh, well, the strings are old. I should probably change the strings. So you're changing the strings, and and then you look and you're like, oh, where's my pick? Oh, I got, I don't like this pick. Where's a, a better one? And oh shit, I want to plug in, but I gotta get my pedals out. So I guess, and you just put all these things in the way, and by the time you're finally set up, like. You know, 47 minutes has gone by <laughs> and that that desire is gone so it's like when you just want to i just want to make music man like i just want this i want to know about this so i can keep going and making music um it's it's not ragging on the learning process it's ragging on the process that the process is using if that makes any sense um yeah so like misunderstanding the context of like again like some random g flat minor seven flat five 13 flat nine like that tells me nothing i don't i don't know what that means so like well i'll just try it everywhere i can i don't know like just put it here we'll start a song on it we'll We'll try and do this, and I'll okay. Like I'll play in this E major chord, okay, and then I'll try playing this. And you know, come to think of it, I can't think off the top of my head if that would sound really nice. I don't know, but it it's just that idea of like being so blind, just kind of fumbling around looking for like Lego pieces and just trying to piece them together. Um there was no real direction in like, what do I do next? 
okay, bye. So context is really important in, in how you use the chords, but I just didn't really get that yet. Um, so at that point, yeah, like experimenting with different sounding chords and trying things and, you know, every once in a while there'd be something kind of cool that would come out. Uh, but mostly it was just kind of hot garbage and it just sounded too much like, um, trying to hammer a square peg in a round hole, you know, the musical equivalent of that, just like, here's a bunch of weird stuff. Um, you know, but over time, starting to get more of that experimenting, you know, like every once in a while you get that one that works, right? So now it's like, okay, so this works, these don't. So let's just kind of put that to the side. Why does this work? Why does this movement? Um, guitar, you're kind of lucky for some of the same reasons that you're disadvantaged because it's very visual. So, you know, the guitarist trap, you can fall into that trap of just always being stuck in the patterns and not really knowing what's going on. But on the flip side of that, you can watch two chords move and see, oh, Okay, so this specific shape of this chord moving to this, that works. And, and some notes change, some notes don't. Some notes will go, you know, like two frets down. This one will go one fret up to this note. And then you start trying to figure out like, okay, well that's like, a G going down to an F, and this is a B going up to a C. So then you start playing, like breaking it down and, and looking at the chord for its individual parts, which is a really important thing to do. You need to look at it as a whole first and see all the stuff in it and get, and get used to that movement and then start being like, okay, so why? Let's look at this guy. Let's look at this guy. Let's look at this guy. And then you start kind of, you know, keeping that in mind about, okay, so when this becomes this, that's a great sound. And it's got a good resolution. Or, conversely, this creates a lot of tension. Right? So over time experimenting and and breaking all of this stuff apart you know it was it was hugely important but if i could have been told some of that stuff right from the start like it, it would have been so much easier but after getting to that point that's where like the real work comes in but it's like the fun work because it's not it's not all this useless, busy work of trying to just figure out where you're even supposed to go, or what to do. It's like, okay, you go here, you do this, go nuts, and you get the work done. And then, you know, your playing changes. It's, it's suddenly, now, I don't play weak chords. If I'm gonna sit down and play with somebody, um, I'm gonna be able to, make some strong contribution. I'm not gonna just play some random crap that doesn't fit with the rest of the song. I'm gonna be able to hear what's going on and recognize that and be like, okay, so this is this is where, like a position in the song where we need some kind of really nice resolution. So this movement, these two chords going to each other work really nice. Okay, here's a, here's a tension spot. Let's play some really chunky stuff. Let's get some like, you know, seconds going, minor second intervals going and just, or like some tritones, like really dissonant stuff. Being able to see how these chords stack up with each other and realizing the intervals that make them up and how those work against each other. 
right? Like, your notes are going from low to high. So some notes being closer together, some notes being further apart, where those close or far apart notes are in the stacking of the notes in the chord, that all matters. You can play a C chord like 30,000 different ways. And it could still technically be like that C major chord, but it's the stuff that you add in and where you add it in and how close you add it to the fundamental pieces of the chord that changes everything. So that's what I mean, where it's like, you know, you, you can competently uh, play with anyone in any situation. You can start to hear and break things apart. You can accompany yourself because you know how the chords work and you can play a chord and make choices, melodic choices, while you're playing rhythm. You know, like they shouldn't really be thought of as so separate entirely. Like they're, they're separate jobs, but the responsibility is still one big one of just making music. That's like, that's part of it. You just think you can strum one single C chord the entire time and get through 30 years of playing music. You're sorely mistaken, or you're just going to be in a, like a, a dad rock cover band, which I give those guys credit because they good at what they do. But if that, like, that's not what this is about. I don't want to teach you how to play Paranoid by Black Sabbath. I want to teach you how to never have to look up a tab or some grungy video of someone trying to teach you the riff probably wrong ever again. I want you to be able to expand your solos like I did, thinking about chords as scales and scales as chords. I want you to think about playing chords with movement like I was able to suddenly do. Playing a chord and creating this sense of, of progression and moving forward. If it just says C on the page, you know, that doesn't mean just play a C. That means like, you know, hint at a C in a loose sense, really. Do what you want with it. Get that, imply it. I, I remember going through um, for a novel writing mentorship from Humber. And one of the best lessons that I learned through uh, writing and like fiction writing was show, don't tell. You know, you want the reader or the listener to kind of have their, their ears or their imagination fill in the pieces together. You're showing them but when they have that moment of, aha, I think this, it, it engages them and it makes them feel smarter. And they are smarter because they have to actually think about what's going on instead of you just being, this is a C chord. The man walked to the pink fridge. Great. <laughs> pink fridge, that's, I wish. Anyway. So what this did for me, getting to that point, getting to that level, it's suddenly, you know, I have the authority that I've been searching for to make these choices, these musical choices. When I know more and more and more about chords and how to move them and how to link them together, how to make them fight each other, you know, that's the authority. That's what you want to strive for so you're always confident that your next choice you're gonna make like you're not second guessing it you're going for it and and you're doing it strongly and even when you make a mistake you know enough about chords and how they move to play something after that one that makes it sound like you meant to do it and you sound like a friggin' genius <laughs> like that's there's a really good miles davis quote that says that like he talks about like, you know, you, you're never not going to make mistakes. It's about how to play that mistake again a couple times and then resolve it 
in a way that makes it sound like you meant to do it and people will be like damn son that was good and you're like yeah i meant to do that totally happens all the time that's like that's the joke you're you're gonna start going and seeing bands bands that allow themselves to kind of play around with what's going on on stage and you're gonna start to notice a lot of that stuff the stage interaction between people like someone will start to go off the rails and then they'll save it and then everyone will look over and be like geez craig that was that was slick you know and it's a it's a big joke it's an inside joke for them um but it's all about getting to that point you can fearlessly make mistakes because you have the authority to make it sound like you intended to and really at that point is it even a mistake or is it just this like happy accident that you're allowing yourself to be more creative you can be more loose with what happens because you know you can always make that next step towards recovery and bring it back in so that's a big reason why chords so important like learning and understanding the the pieces and the building and the functioning of them um like it was just such an important thing so when i decided to make the guitar chord encyclopedia and start putting it together um i remembered all of that crap that i ran into where i was like this doesn't make sense it's disorganized things are mislabeled and it's just kind of useless because there's no real explanation so i'm kind of approaching it from a position of like i want this to be clear and i want this to be not just like a resource book where you can you can flip open to a page and and it's going to be organized several different ways within itself so that you can use it like an encyclopedia or a dictionary where it's like i want to look at a weird seventh chord but i want it to have the root on this string and you can find that you know but the first part of the book for for the most part is going to be talking about building chords and like what these different type of intervals will get you so that once you start flipping through and looking at the chords and seeing how they're stacked and you start to see these patterns and and you know a lot of the different shapes i'm, I'm going to be talking about how um you know how what is contained within and how they might work and how much tension or what is a good situation to maybe use this chord in it's like, oh if you're if you're doing a, a an ending you know and you're and it's like a minor then you're going to want to use this grip for like an a minor nine chord you know and we've got the, the the b on the top and it's just this really nice ah and it gives a, a kind of a funky sound where it's like it's finished but there's intrigue because it's not totally resolved you know like it that's a really good ending chord i use that all the time the one i'm thinking of um so yeah i, do, I don't want you guys to have to be fiddling around in the dark you know i'll turn the light on you, you don't need extra steps you're already going to be learning so much stuff anyway and it's a lot for your mind to process and you're gonna take your own time with it. But I don't wanna just add time to that. I want you guys to get to that point as fast as you are capable to be making your own music and creating it. So that's it, that's, that's the, the goal. The Guitar Chord Encyclopedia. Um, I just want better musicians out there. That's it. So make it happen. <laughs> All right. Today's record, the vinyl pickings section from my own collection. It 
is Daft Punk Discovery. Uh, this is their second album, I believe, from 2000, 2001. Uh, Discovery is. Hmm. I mean, homework. It, every Daft Punk album is really, really good. <laughs> kind of goes without saying. At least, like, if you're if you're a fan of Daft Punk and you've heard all the albums, they're all really good. But they all have their own elements that make them distinct. It's it's clearly Daft Punk, but there's things about it that like each album has its own kind of theme. So whereas Homework was very much like the electro equivalent of a rock album, it's very dirty, it's gritty synths, and like, you know, if, if you are a rock guy, that's a, that's a hard album to pass up. If you're like, no, 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 that electronic crap, it's no good, but then if you listen to some of that stuff on homework, it's like this takes a, a different approach. It's more about the smooth production of like, you know, late 70s, early 80s, like disco and not like wiener disco, you know. It's it, like a lot of people are turned off by that term of disco, but there's like a specific the underground disco stuff. This is a, a rebirth, a reimagining of that very smooth produced, everything's clean. Um, and I mean like not clean, clean. I don't know. There's, there's just like a, a crystal, it's very like clear, the production on this album. It's very smooth. And yeah, it's it's like electric glide. It it just kind of things flow into one another, and I like that picture. A lot going on. Yeah, it's it. I don't know. They always manage to kind of reinvent themselves in some way, and yeah. So if you're a fan and somehow you've missed this album. Or if maybe you're not really sure, I don't even know. They're all really good. I like Short Circuit a lot. It's definitely like, I would think of two janky robots trying to break dance, like break dance battle. That's very much what that song is. Um, Aerodynamic is also really good. I love High Life. That's a great one. It's it's a party album, but it 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 has a different type of edge than Homework. Homework is very like, whoa, I don't want to see, you know, this this house we're partying in tomorrow morning because it's going to be gross and it's going to smell weird. This is more like that same type of party, but at a a really rich person's house where somehow everything is miraculously staying clean. <laughs> That's like the best I can possibly describe it without you really listening to it. Um, but yeah, they, they always have really good love letters to the music that inspires them without copying it. So this is like a very specific era of music that they like and they're recreating it in a 2001 modern kind of way so check it out discovery da daft punk i want to look like daft punk all right well that is it for this episode of m file change your music change your life uh please feel free to follow us on all social platforms tell your friends about it and uh click the link below for the free ebook of 100 plus chord progression formulas uh it's like the best possible prompt to get you started on writing a song maybe you didn't even know was kicking around in there so go out there create the music that you hear in your head and i'll see you next time 
Peace.